YB stays on your neck. <laughs> stays on my neck. I hear that the guys that you spar with, they all have the same thing in common. None of them can touch you. Do you find it challenging, Tyson, to actually get good sparring partners when you feel like no one's actually challenging I don't know you? I'm white. <laughs> He used to be my sparring partner, mm -hmm. but then he couldn't defend himself to where to send him home. When I say that they can't afford it, I really mean they cannot afford the Gypsy King here. Mm -hmm. They don't have the funds. I'm messing with the biggest TV station in the world mm -hmm. and getting paid the most money out of all of them. So now I'm an OG. <laughs> ESPN is massive, yeah. massive. Massive. Yes. It's the best everywhere on the planet with the biggest TV network on the planet. Mm -hmm. Backed by Disney. And they've done an incredible job. Disneyland for free this year. <laughs> we gotta get you the family passes. <laughs> Bring yeah. the whole family over. <laughs> um, they did it. I will be selling these Disney passes. <laughs> <laughs> Half price. Um, they did an incredible job with promoting your last fight against Schwartz. It was uh, a great performance. What was that like for you? to walk out the way that you did and get the sort of uh, you know reception that you did while you were there. It seems like you couldn't go anywhere without people mobbing you. It was fantastic. They did a very good job at ESPN. I was very happy. Um, and I did take over America. Now I'm the biggest combat sports star in the US and it's gonna continue to keep moving forward. Yo my dance, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe and obviously hit the bell for notifications. Now I've got to say, it's actually been a while since I've had to do another episode of the Suck Off series. I think the last person I exposed for being a top shiner, being a top, top head don, was Ellie Suckback in his Deontay Wilder interview. Now... Just in case any of the feminism, feminist, social justice warriors are out there trying to say, oh, YB's being sexist. No, the first person who got exposed for sucking someone off was a man. Let's get that straight. There's no sexism here. If it, I don't care if it was an alien. If, if I, if, listen, if an alien comes down and starts sucking fury off an interview, YB's going to expose it. Let's get to it anyway. The first thing, the whole mannerisms of this interview, and this is the problem. These people, they claim to be journalists. So it really grates on me when there's blatant public facts out there that these guys completely discard and just, just try and gas people up. It's mental. But that's why, I guess in a way, they have to be like this. Because you have to suck people off and blow up people's egos in order to get an interview. That's the sad world we're in, unfortunately. Because someone like Fury, we've already seen Fury. Let's get it straight. Coogan Cassius... He, he borderline sucks Fury off as well, but any time Coogan Cassius tries to ask an honest question, Fury says, Oh, yes, I'm not talking about that. Yes, don't mention his name. Oh, yes, Dante Wilder, don't mention his name. Tell him what, don't mention his name. He's a gym sweeper. We've already heard him shutting down journalists and whatnot, so I do understand it. So in a way, it's more to do with Fury's fragile ego and fragile mental state. But anyway, nonetheless... As a man or as a woman, you should you should really stand on your morals. Then again, I understand you got to count the paper as well. So anyway, let's get on with what I observed. Now, it should be pretty clear to you where I'm going with this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm blind. Maybe I, I read into things too much. But the whole interview was just it was just cre it was cringy, man. This definition of sucking people off, in my opinion. Anyway, from the top. So she starts off, you hear the question, she, this, the whole way she says, she says, um, she says, um, uh, yeah, I've heard, uh, all of your sparring partners have one problem, Tyson. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of your sparring partners have one problem, Tyson. None of them can touch you, Tyson. Oh, Tyson, I'd love to suck you off, Tyson. Uh, oh, Tyson, you're so skilled, all your sparring partners can't touch you. Do you ever get bored of not being touched in sparring? I'd love to touch you. Do you get any more gas than that? Completely blowing his ego up. And I thought to myself, you know what, Michelle? Since you want to sit here and, and talk and gas, him, gas his ego up about how great he is in sparring and how his sparring partners can't touch him, why don't he have a decent fight? How about that? 
And the other thing whilst we're on the point of having a decent fight, what we do know is, Fury's last decent fight, you sit here talking about, oh Fury, oh Fury, oh, how does it feel never being able to get any good work? How does it feel that none of your sparring partners can touch you? Well, huh, never mind sparring partners, what we do know is, in front of 300,000 people, Deontay Wilder had no problem finding his chin twice. So, maybe, maybe Fury should step his sparring partners up. Because Wilder had no problem putting him down twice. Steve Clinton had no problem turning his lights off. Timber! Yeah? That, they're the facts of the situation. Simple. There's a reason Tarzan Fury only brings stiffs into his camp. Because he has to do that for his ego. That's the truth of it. Seriously, the same reason why Fury refused to go into the rematch. This guy, he can't take. He's got. He's got. A, he's, got a, he's got a weak ego. He can't take criticism. He can't take not being endeared by the fans. Do you understand? That's the. That's the reason he ran away from the sport and dropped his belt. Oh, oh, oh! The fans haven't sucked me off. Oh, the fans. The fans don't give me any credit. Oh, yeah. Oh, AJ gets all the credit. Oh. How come we don't get any credit? Oh, this this what he went away for. It's, it's it's factually written. He went away from the sport because everyone didn't blow him for the most boring performance we ever watched. He wanted a medal for that. He did seriously. He did. I remember his dad came back and was saying, "Oh yes, oh if that was Anthony Joshua, he would have got the Queen's the Queen's Royal Voice to pick him up when he landed back in the UK." Yes. Oh 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 my son. Yes. My son has solved world poverty. Oh, that's what, that's what was going on. Making a big deal about it. You went to Germany and you stunk the place out. It was as boring as you like. You tickled him to death. He landed about ten more jabs the whole damn fight. Yeah, that's the facts of the situation. Now, if you want to call that a boxing someone's head, oh, I boxed Klitschko's head off. Yes, oh, I mentally broke Klitschko. If you want to call it that, that's your business. Anyway, so that was the first thing that irritated me. Like. I just don't understand what, what angle she's coming from. What that in my definition of sucking someone off is when is when a reporter asks questions or has mannerisms that are just all that all she was doing there was blowing his ego. Imagine asking someone that, oh, how does it feel that none of your sparring partners can ever touch you? Oh, how does it feel that, that all of your all of your sparring partners have one thing in common, they can't touch you? Come on. Let's get real now. I showed you like the sparring video of Fury being put flat on his back a few a few weeks ago. Timber went down like a sack of potatoes. In fact, I might even put that in this video. Went down stiff. Timber flat as you like. So let's get it straight. <laughs> and that was Fury right as well. There's too many Fury fans coming here hating. Listen, nothing got Fury fans more salty than seeing that exclusive sparring video I put up. Fury went down like a sack of potatoes, flat on his back, yeah? And don't be coming in here saying, oh, it's not Fury, that's Fury alright, that is Fury alright, if, even if you listen carefully, you can hear him, if you listen to him on the floor, uh, uh, you, you can hear his voice, you can hear his, them, them noises he makes, makes on the floor, they're a very particular set of noises, he goes, and if you listen carefully to the wild knockdowns, he makes the same noises. It's that kind of that, that deep, that deep, um, that deep inner murmurs, that deep inner mumblings, them unconscious mumblings. There's a very particular sound. When people get put unconscious, when their eyes spin in the back of their head, they make a particular sound, and you can hear it. It's like, you can hear it from Fury. It's there. The facts are there. Yeah? Anyway, that's the, that was the first thing. The next thing that irritated me. Well, in fact, it's not even about irritating me. It's the, the next thing that was just sucking offish. She goes, um. So then Fury starts saying, oh, oh, yes, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, they can't afford me. Dylan White, they can't afford me. Yes, Sky Sports, they can't afford me. He's talking about all this rubbish about, oh, yeah, the reason I didn't fight AJ, the reason I didn't fight Dylan White was because they couldn't afford me. And at that point. Any decent reporter worth worth any worth their weight in gold would have said, "Listen, can you actually explain what you mean? Because the AJ fight would have been twenty, thirty million dollars. So are you saying you're earning more than that? Are you categorically saying that you're earning more than thirty million dollars per fight? That's what you know what I'm trying to say. That's what I'd be asking. How can you sit there and say you didn't take the AJ and Dylan White fight because it's about money?" That must, you know, that, that, that's what makes sense to me. Instead, she sat there giggling and saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, ESPN are massive. 
Fury talking about, oh, I'm with ESPN, yeah. And this is my problem as well. Maybe it's to do with general IQ. Maybe she's just not too sharp. But what irritates me is people often say this. They say, um, oh, yeah, Fury's with, the, Fury's with ESPN. They're the biggest company in the world. They're the biggest sports company in the world. Yeah, the fact that ESPN is the biggest sports company in the world does not mean Fury's getting paid proportionately to the size of ESPN. What do we know? Terence Crawford is also with ESPN. He's not being paid proportionately or, or proportionate to the size of ESPN. You get paid what you're bringing in or you get paid what you get paid. The fact that, as an example, the fact that you work for um, Microsoft or Facebook or Apple don't necessarily guarantee that you're getting paid Apple kind of money. Just because they're the biggest companies in the world doesn't mean you're getting paid the biggest money in the world. It's about whatever you're um, particular salary is, and f the fact that Fury is ESPN, and on that note as well, okay, ESPN, you were ESPN, what numbers did you do? What crowd did you sell out? No, you didn't sell out squat, and actually that moves on to my next point. It's, it's shocking. Michelle Phelps then says, um, oh, yeah, ESPN did a great promotion for you. Oh, yeah, um, did a great promotion for you. You couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go anywhere. How did it feel not being able to go anywhere without being mobbed by fans? I thought, listen, that is mental. How did it feel not being able to be mobbed by fans? Bro, listen, the only place, let's get something straight now, yeah? You, Michelle Phelps says that Fury couldn't go anywhere without being mobbed. Then why is it, in reality, yeah, going on the street getting mobbed, okay, whatever. But in reality, there is one place Fury should have been mobbed. And that should have been on his fight night, surely. Yeah. What good is it being mobbed on the street? But then you go, to, you you go to your actual fight, your main event, what you're known for, and no one's there. Where was this? Where was the mob of people in the event when the arena was was 20% capacity sold out, or 20 only 20% capacity sold? Where was all the mobs then? And it's just contradictory. It's just BS. How can you sit there as a reporter and say, oh yeah, ESPN did a great promotion? Well, if a great promotion would, to me would be 90% sold out. A great promotion to me would be etc, etc. It was out of the three heavyweights, it was the worst one. And even compared to Dylan White. I already told you lot, Dylan White's ticket prices are over two times higher than Fury's. How is that possible? You want to talk about how great ESPN is? Well, you're right, ESPN is bigger. So why is it Dylan White's tickets are two times higher? Why is it AJ's tickets are ten times higher? Why is it both of them two events are sold out and Fury's was 30% capacity? And you want to sit here and talk about how it's a great promotion. It was a shocking promotion. That's the truth of the situation. Maybe I'm wrong. And that's the reason that's what reporters are for. But she ain't a reporter. She's just sitting there sucking Fury off, bottom line. That's all, that's all I heard was suck, 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 suck. Simple. And it, what I'm trying to say is, for me, it's the pure contradiction. Not only are you sitting there, not only, yeah, there's pure lies. It wasn't a great promotion, it was awfully promoted. And don't get me wrong, if AJ's events, if Dylan White's events start sucking, I'll be saying the same thing about about and them two people. But to the contrary, it's the opposite. Their, their events, is, their, AJ, AJ's got the highest selling event in the US, out of the, all the heavyweights. Fact, no problem. Um, And then Fury says, oh yeah, we took over... We took over the USA and she's sitting there humming, she's sitting there, yeah, nodding her head and smiling and... You didn't take over squat. Seriously. You didn't take over anything. It was a shocking show. It was... The numbers were awful. It was empty. It made me laugh that Bob Arum sits there talking about Eddie Hearn can't promote. Bro, Bob Arum, that was a shocking show. No one was there. No one was there. No tickets were sold and the ticket prices were as cheap as chips. And you're in Vegas. If you can't sell tickets in Vegas, you've got no hope. Everyone literally goes there for entertainment, but obviously people, and that's the other thing, she said, oh yeah, it was an amazing performance, it was an amazing performance, amazing promotion, it was amazing everything. Amazing performance, you had a complete stiff in there. When are we, when, and this is the problem, when are we as a, as a collective going to start calling a spade a spade? Yeah? How can you be sitting there rating the Schwartz performance? It was Tom Schwartz. And this is the guy, Fury, who's meant to be, oh, yeah, he's meant to be killing people in sparring and people can't touch him. Well, if people can't touch him in sparring, why is he not challenging himself 
in the actual ring? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. If Fury is that confident, if Fury is that good, why is it he's not looking for the best contest every time? It makes me laugh. Ben Davidson says, oh, well, he wasn't ready for the Wilder fight. Oh, yeah, well, I need a few more fights. Yeah, I'd like to have a few more rounds. Well, wait there a minute. I thought you was, I thought you was schooling everyone in sparring. So what do you need more rounds for? What do you need more fights for? You are either schooling everyone in sparring or you're not. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Do you sometimes get bored at the fact you can't have good sparring partners? Well, take, take a decent fight then. How about that? If you're having that much problem getting sparring partners, why don't you actually have a good fight? Because what we do know is, the last good fight you was in, you ended up on your back twice. So if that isn't enough, enough entertainment for you, I don't know what is.